where do we start? We are, we are on, on the week before Easter, and uh, I, I love Easter, right? I, I, you know I love Christmas. You, 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 you're aware of that. Uh, but I love Easter too, and I, I don't think sometimes it gets enough, um, enough love from us, right? And so uh, this, this today, next week, and then the following week, we're going we're gonna to be looking at Jesus as King. Now, here's the thing. We can celebrate Jesus as our Savior. We, we kind of view Him as our friend. We know Him as teacher, but King, King Jesus, we will declare Him as King of kings because we know that He is greater than all others, but do we fully understand the King that He is? Because it's, it's altogether different from these kings that we have seen throughout our history. I mean, we live in a nation without kings. So maybe it's a little more difficult for us to, to embrace this description of Jesus. I know when I think about a king, I think of a person holed up in a castle away from everybody, dictating and telling people what to do. He, everybody knows him, but he doesn't know everybody. I mean, that's the view of king that I have. I think of royalty. But here's the thing. While king may be a, a harder version of Christ for me, to fully see because we view him through the context of our world, I hope we can see him as King Jesus in the kingdom of God. It's a very different picture. It's a very different idea of what a king is because as with all things, the kingdom of God, things are not as they are on this earth. Things are not as they are on this earth. That should get us excited because I don't know if you've lived on earth long or looked around you just a little bit, but to be in a kingdom that's not like this, wow. So so here's where we're at. Every year for Easter, it's like, oh man, what do I preach on? And and Nathan and I had the discussion early on this year, like in January, he's like, what are you preaching on for Easter? I'm like, I'm not sure. He's like, probably the resurrection. I'm like, great idea. Yes. Yes. kind of how that discussion goes every time. It's good, right? But it's like, how? Do, do what more? Be funny. Okay. <laughs> okay, I know Nathan said be Smithgrove, but let's be Smithgrove with a smile today, okay? <laughs> Another reason we're doing these pictures is I went to the website. If you've not checked it out, check out the new website. It's looking great. And the first picture that pops up is me standing on stage in a suit, and I'm like, where did that picture come from? <laughs> and I got to look, and it's like the 150th celebration. I'm like, that's great, but that is false advertisement. (laughs) People cannot expect that. Now, you'll probably see me in a suit next week, and we'll probably take pictures again next week, but that's not to be expected. Anyway, (laughs) smile, smile. This is good stuff. Um, But no, here's where I'm at. I, I thought, what do we do with Easter this year? How do we approach it in maybe a little bit different way? And so my thought is we need to be challenged in the way that we view our Savior. We, we can become so just in, in a rut about this is who he is, this is who I see him, this is who I've created him to be if we're not careful. And yet scripture gives us this, this amazing picture of who he is. And so, so as we look at this idea of, of Jesus as king, let's remember he's a different kind of king. This, this is what Israel had been promised. This, this, they, they were looking for an earthly king to come and take over their nation. They wanted this freedom from oppression, and, and he was the one that was going to do it. And yes, Jesus was king. Jesus is king, but he wasn't coming to change the world in the way they were looking for. They, they had these ideas of what they thought should happen, what they wanted I mean, we get that way too, right? We want Jesus to fulfill our thoughts and our wishes and our wants of who he is. And sometimes, sometimes we just need to take a step back and say, wait a minute, does this even align with who God reveals him to be? So I want us to look at our Jesus over these next few weeks in maybe a different light. Because here's what Jesus came to do. He came to rule in the hearts of his followers and not in any earthly way at all. 
So this morning we're going to jump into a passage, and it's not our typical Palm Sunday passage. This is part of the conversation, the interrogation of, of Pilate and Jesus. And so pay attention to Pilate's words. Pay attention to how many times he refers to Jesus as king of the Jews. Listen closely to how Jesus responds. And again, challenge your own view of Jesus as king as we read through these passages this morning. Starting in John chapter 18, verse 33, here's what it says. Oh, wait, hang on. I'm getting excited. <sighs> So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews, but my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, so you are a king. And Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. And Pilate said to him, what is is truth. Now, like I said, we, we may not think of this as the, the typical Palm Sunday passage. We're going to get to that passage in a, a few moments, but, but I want to start here in the midst of, of Jesus's trial because I want us to really see how the world was viewing him, how, how they were, were looking at him. Jesus was speaking a truth that all could not hear. What he was saying, not everybody could comprehend. There were some that weren't ready to hear it. He, he was healing people. He was declaring people free from sin. He was speaking with the authority of God himself. And guess what? People didn't like it. Yeah, there were those that were following. There were those that were praising. We're going we're to see the people that are just lining the streets. But then there were these others that were like, no, no, we can't have this. We, we, can't, we can't see. They felt as if Jesus, if, if what Jesus was saying was truth, it was going to change the world they knew and they ruled, whether it was in religions or politics. The things he was saying, they were like, no, 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 that can't be. Because if, if he's speaking truth, it means I'm not doing it right. It means I'm not in control. I'm not in charge. The truth was people were threatened by Jesus coming as king. The religious elite were scared Jesus was going to erase their importance in the faith. Pilate I'm sure he had some concern that Jesus could take his throne. Other leaders were bothered by these, these great multitudes that were coming to hear him speak and, and following after him. Jesus had come with a mission to change the world, but in the most unexpected way. And, and see, they, these people couldn't see past their concerns, past their wants for a king to save them, to hear the truth. And Jesus assures Pilate, he says, the kingdom I'm from, the kingdom I'm over, it's not from here. This isn't it. He says, my, my people, they're not fighting here to protect me. The other thing is, Jesus never denies the charges of being king, does he? But, but once more, the truth he spoke could not be heard fully. Those seeing him as an earthly king and not a king of heaven were missing the point. And I, th I think there are times where we miss the point as well. I mean, let's just be real honest here. There's times where we view Jesus in ways that we, we really shouldn't because it's not scripturally accurate. It's not reflective of who he truly is. It's something that we've designed. It's something that maybe we've thought up. You know, I'm really excited that we, we get to offer Journey to the Cross again this year. Because it is a way for us to get focused on exactly what Easter means. It, it's, a, it's a way for us to, to be reminded of who Jesus truly is. Like I said, what you're doing is you're reading Scripture. You're reading God's Word about His Son. And so there's no way, there's no way to, to, to walk away and say, that's not who Jesus was because God tells us it is. And so I'm, I'm excited that we have that opportunity this year. But before we get to the cross, we start with Jesus entering Jerusalem and, and to, to these cries of worship, to this great celebration of the king that had come to free the world from oppression, a king come to take over and set everyone free. At least that's how they viewed him, right? 
a triumphant king coming for the throne. Upon his entry, there's these these shouts of joy, and they were raising their voices in praise for this great king who had arrived. They they viewed it as a triumphant entry because he was going to change everything in the world. They had been promised. He was going to take over. And then the truth was, after all he had done up to this point, right, he had shown his power. He, He had revealed his authority. They saw his majesty. So surely someone with that power like him that could raise the dead and walk on water and feed thousands from nothing more than a little boy's lunch could take his rightful throne and rule with no issues. I mean, this was God's son, right? So he can march. He's got every right to that throne. That's what they were looking for. Listen to the passage that speaks to his entry. Place yourself in the shoes and then consider Jesus' perspective as he watches this all unfold. Those presents were welcoming their new king who was, again, he's going to fix their problems in this world. But, But Jesus was coming to lay down his life. Look what it says in John chapter 12. The next day, the large crowd had come to the feast, heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the king of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. See, God's people, they had been waiting since creation for this coming king. And here was a moment prophesied coming to fulfillment. Their cries of please save us now are ringing out. The the crowd understood what Jesus could do. They had witnessed. They had heard the stories. They were drawn to him. They they wanted this. They They had been looking for a millennia. And now the time had arrived to celebrate their king. But their view of him as a triumphant king was not was not exactly what was unfolding before their eyes. Yes, he would be triumphant but in ways they couldn't imagine. At this point, it wasn't the time for that. I I wonder if they missed the part where Jesus is riding in on a donkey. I mean, royalty doesn't show up on a donkey, right? They ride in on that big horse that, I mean, demands a presence, says, look at me, not Jesus. I mean, did they miss that part? Did they think, well, maybe he just couldn't find one. (laughs) I mean, maybe that should have given them just a little idea of what was happening. An earthly king, when they come into the city, they demand respect. They, They expect you to look at them with dignity, not riding a a lowly animal. Not understanding the truth of why Jesus had come, this, this group welcoming him to, to this town, they were, they were celebrating what they thought to be the next ruler of their nation. Not a king come to rule in the hearts of any that would believe. When you read the other gospel accounts, my, the one that, that just strikes me every time I look at him is Luke's account where, where he actually includes in there that, that Jesus is weeping for the city. That, that every, I, the last few Easter's, I've really, as I've read this passage and, and I've looked across them, I, I, I just, that, that hits me. That, that there Jesus is. I mean, they are celebrating him. They are praising him. They are come and save us. And his response is tears. He's, he's weeping for the city. He knew they didn't understand exactly what was coming. He he knew those that were lost. He was not going to take an earthly throne, but but become the sacrificial lamb to satisfy the Father's wrath. And he's weeping for them. I mean, he knows what he's about to face, but this is our King Jesus. 
Not, not the earthly one, not the one that they were expecting to assume the throne and take control. But, but this is our Jesus who says, I know what I'm about to face, but my compassion for them is just too much. And he's weeping for them. He longed for them to know the truth, to respond to the truth. But not long after this, not, not long after these cries of praise, these cries of save us, they turn to the, the cries of crucify. Right? Where, where we saw this triumphant king, Jesus saw this lost people that he had come to save, that he had come to bring salvation to those who were welcoming him. He was trying to welcome them into his true kingdom. What about us? How, how do we view our Jesus as king? When we look at him, who do we see? Do, do we view him through this earthly scope of what we want, of what we expect, of what we think we deserve? Or, or do we view him as King Jesus in God's kingdom? Not, not ours. I mean, knowing the purpose he, he came into this world for, but, but that wasn't the only view of Jesus that day. I think about the disciples, and, and I honestly think their view was this. Uh, he was a dead man walking toward execution. I mean, he, he was headed towards his death. I can't, I can't begin to imagine the, the, the emotions of the disciples during that last week of Jesus' life. I, I can't even fathom what it would have been like. But here they're walking in to Jerusalem with Jesus, and, and they're hearing these cheers. They're hearing these, these, these shouts of joy, this praise that is going up. And I wonder if it began to cloud the reality that they knew was coming. I wonder if they thought, maybe Jesus got this wrong right? Maybe they thought, well, he told us this, and, and, but, but look at what's happening. Maybe, maybe death isn't imminent, because why would they welcome him this way? See, as Pilate tried to understand Jesus as king, having only heard about him, the disciples had been with him. They had a front row seat to Jesus's ministry, and we, we read that even during these times, Right? All this time they've spent with him. They've, they've ate with him. They've traveled with him. They've, they've ministered with him. He sent them to go do it on their own. And, and here they are, and they, they don't understand fully what's happening. They were right there with him. And so then I think, well, no wonder we have trouble. I mean, if the disciples didn't understand fully, it's no wonder Matt Mendenhall doesn't understand fully. I hope some of you are there with me. I don't want to be lonely out here. I mean, they, they had lived life with him. And they still didn't grasp, I don't think, that death was imminent and a resurrection was coming. We like to think that if we were there, <laughs> right? If we were there, we would have known. We would have believed. But that's easy for us to say because we have the whole story in our scripture, we can read it fully so we don't have to guess around. We don't have to wonder. what we, we know. So it's easy for us to say, had I been there, I would have stood by him the whole time. But where the crowd was celebrating, I have to wonder, were the disciples preparing themselves for this death? A death that unable to grasp what Jesus had told them could, could mean the end for them as well. I mean, they're human. They've got to be thinking, if what Jesus has said is not true... If, if he does die, well, what's that mean for us? Look over in Mark and see what Jesus tells them about his coming death. One of the times, one of the three times he actually shares this with them. They were on the road going to Jerusalem and Jesus was walking ahead of them and they were amazed and those who followed were afraid. Taking the 12 again, he began to tell them what was to happen to him. See, we're going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles. And they will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. And after three days, he will rise. See, Jesus didn't back down from the truth. He, he's trying to get them focused. He's trying to tell them, here's what's coming Pay attention. But how many of you have ever been in a conversation with somebody and they say something and they're not done speaking, but that is the only thing you can hear? 
Imagine if you hear Jesus saying, they're going to mock me, they're going to spit on me, they're going to flog me, they're going to kill me. I don't know, but I, my ears probably would have shut off right there. I might not have heard that whole, and after three days he will rise. Jesus told them it's coming. Jesus told them it would be here. It wasn't going to be the end, but did they hear the full truth? Was it hard to focus on that, 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 that past the idea of Jesus dying? Why, why couldn't they comprehend that death wasn't the end? Sometimes we can tend to just focus on the parts of Jesus that we want to see, the parts that make us feel warm and fuzzy, right? We like those parts. We like to talk about Jesus as our friend. We like to talk about the salvation that he's brought us. But Jesus is king. We've got to get a grasp. We've got to fully embrace what that means for us. We've got to pay attention to who, who God has told us Christ is, not who we've created him to be. And see, I think that's what had happened here as he entered the city, as, as, as Pilate's questioning him. They're looking at an earthly meaning of who Jesus is. We've got to embrace who God has unveiled him to be, who he's told us he is in Scripture. See, as we move through Easter this year, focus in on Jesus. Don't see him in just way, but see him in the light of, of how we read about him, what we read about him in the Bible. While the disciples may have viewed Jesus as a dead man walking, they had heard the truth. They, they should have known that, that it, it wasn't the end. But we see their response, right? Right? We see them walk through Jesus' arrest. We see them through his trial, through his death, through his burial. It's really not a time for them to be proud. It it's really doesn't speak highly of their devotion to him. And again, it's easy for us to say, I would never. I mean, we know the rest of the story. That impacts how we view what happened. I mean, if you know the end... We have a very different response. I think knowing how it works out, we kinda, it kind of changes how we may see Pilate's questioning. But does it also change how we see our Jesus as king? He wasn't a dead man walking. He was a king even at this point. A king, that again, who had come to change the hearts of those who would believe. But what type of king walks towards death? What, what kind of king weeps for a city that, that's celebrating one moment and wanting him dead the next? Jesus isn't just any king. He isn't an earthly king. He was a king come to serve all and uh, all others and not be served himself. He was a king come to take the world's sin so that we could experience true life. The, the truth was he wasn't here to take a throne. He was here to walk a path that led to death, if even for a moment, to show others what love looked like because Jesus is a humble king come to save the world. You look at his beginnings. His arrival on earth is, is, is in the most humble way possible. He's born in a manger. Look at his entry into the city. He's riding on this, this lowly animal. No royalty would touch that. The stature that he assumes of a servant of all. Tears cried in compassion for the lost. All point to this humble king sent by God to give us this opportunity to experience salvation. While more kingly than any other king that was or will be, he challenged the norm. He said, this isn't it. This world isn't my kingdom. He would reign in a new way. He would humble himself to the point of death in, in the most humiliating way for a world that didn't understand, that didn't want him, yet needed him more than anything else. And the truth is, the world was watching for him. They were anticipating his coming. They had been told he would be there and even told how it would happen. But for all the watching they did... They missed him. 
they had different expectations. They had earthly expectations of a king that didn't look or act or speak like Jesus. They wanted a different king than he had come to be. And while, while at that point he came into Jerusalem, they recognized him. Again, it wouldn't be long before they would reject him. Go back clear to the prophecies in the Old Testament about Jesus coming to Jerusalem in Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, a colt, the foe of a, a donkey. I will cut off the chariot of Epaphram and the war horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. See, Jesus was not what they were expecting but he was more than they could ever comprehend. His arrival on earth was less than royal. His, his life was not that of a king, but a servant. And now his death would shock some. It would please others, but it would change everything. Yes, they praised him as he entered the city. In a matter of days, those cries went from save us to kill him. But for us, we are blessed to have the word of God to read and to study because we get a more complete picture of Jesus as king here. We read this scripture, we read this prophecy, and we see that he is just. We see that he is bringing salvation. We see that he is humble. This is our King Jesus, the one we proclaim, the one we worship, the one we have a relationship with. This is King Jesus who is seated on the right hand of God in the throne up in heaven. This is our King king. He is there interceding for us constantly. So much more than the king they wanted. They wanted someone to fix their problems here. He does way better. Oh, they, they, the freedom he brings, it's open to all. It's a freedom greater than any we experience here on this earth. Jesus, the one king that could boast in all he did. He had every right to say, here's who I am. Look at what I did. And he doesn't. He doesn't even count himself equal to God. Right? He lived a life that just modeled how we're to live in humility as we follow him, as we serve those people around us. We, we can, with great confidence, worship him for saving us, praise him for knowing us, and lift him up because we know he's defeated death and sin. And yet the question comes, how do we respond to him knowing this? What is our response to Jesus? See, as we, we come to the end of our main passage, Pilate asks this question. He says, what is truth? See, truth is often viewed as relative, right? As, as, something, as something that can be controlled. You can spin the truth to, to benefit your causes. But truth is fixed. It flows from the lips of God, who himself never changes. Jesus came to reveal God's truth. We can't spin it. We've got to submit to it. Truth is the instrument that God uses to call us into his kingdom, the kingdom where Jesus sits as this humble king. See, Easter is a fun one to prepare for. But like I said, I don't want us to get comfortable and expect to hear the same things over. And so, so again, this is a different view this year, a different challenge this year. Let's begin to see Jesus in the way that God intends us to see him. Not, not the way, again, that we've created, that we've said, this is how it should look, this is who he should be to us, but who God tells us he is. He doesn't change. 
I told you our response was going to be a little bit different today, right? And, and we're to that point where we're going we're gonna to move into a, a response that you're going to go, whoa, wait a minute. Is this Smith? Oh, are you nervous? Good. I may have to have you up here, Noel, so you can take pictures of the nervousness on there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, here's the thing. As we move to our time of response this morning, yes, we're going to respond in song, but we're going to respond in song in a different way. I'm going to give you a few questions to, to meditate on, to think about, because I want us to get the gravity of seeing Jesus in the way we should, okay? And so, so here, here's a few questions. Do we view Jesus as the humble king he is? Or do we get caught up in the other aspects, the earthly aspects that we see that our Jesus should fit into, right? How, how do we view him? Earthly constructs or the kingdom of heaven? That's a big part of it. The other thing I, I ask is this. Do we recognize him? Do we receive him as he is in scripture or do we reject him? There's only two answers there. We've got to be honest about it though. Finally, I ask, what is our response? What is our response in this? And so this morning, our response is just that. We're going to praise Him. We're going to lift our voices in praise. But here's how we're going to do it. We're not going to have the words up on the screen. We're not even going to have the band come back. We're going to end in song together as a body. I'm going to ask you to stand, not yet, but, but in a moment, I'm going to ask you to stand I'm going to ask you to turn to see each other. I'm going to, I want us to put ourselves there on that Palm Sunday where, where the crowds were lining the streets. And yeah, maybe they didn't understand fully, but we do. We know who Jesus is. We know the King that He is. We know it's different than what the, earth, the world thinks. But the point of this is to look at each other as we sing to encourage one another. I know we're like, we can't do that. Yes, we can. You want, to, you want to stand where you are and turn, that's fine. You want to get out along the edges of the sanctuary and sing. I want us, I just want us to focus in on who our Jesus is as King today. I want us to encourage one another in the way that I don't sing well. Guess what? I don't care. It doesn't matter. This is an opportunity for us to praise Him because of the King that He is. Easter's looking a little bit different this year. That's good. I want us to begin to see Jesus as he is and model our lives after that, Jesus. Let's get away from the worldly constructs of it. Let's not see it as his kingdom is here on this earth. Like this is his, he told us this isn't his kingdom. This is exciting. So I'm going to invite you to stand as I pray. I'm going to invite you to get into position. Grab a hymnal. There's some down in the pews if you're, you're worried about the song. Or, sorry, chairs. <laughs> Habit, you know. Well, I don't say hymnals a lot either. So if you want to grab one of those, you can. Go ahead and stand. I'm going to pray, and then we'll, 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 Nathan will lead us into song. Father, we do praise you. We do thank you. We, we ask that you just open our eyes this Easter to who you are. Father, we see today that you are a humble king. You're not a king like any other. So help us to understand that. Help us to grasp that fact that, Father, you are our king. You are a king in the kingdom of God. You are a king that knows his people personally. And, Father, we praise you for that. But, Father, don't let it just end there. Help it to shape us. Help it to mold us to look more like you so that as we resemble you, others will be pointed to know who you are as well. So, Father, as we sing today, as we, we sing as a body, as we look at each other while we praise you, help it to encourage us. Help it to, to form, even now, these, these thoughts of, of scripturally, of biblically, who you are, who God has shown you to be, and help us to embrace that today. Father, we thank you for this time we've had, and we will give you all the glory and praise for what you're going to do through it. In Jesus' name, amen.